So these days I see a lot of misuse or abuse of the word science. People will say things like, believe the science or trust in the science. Or they will say, science says, and then they will present an opinion, usually that furthers their political motive. I've often heard many theists misuse the idea of science and claim that science is a belief system similar to a religion. I feel like we live in a world where we need you know, clear scientific reasoning more than ever before, but it seems like we're sort of running in this opposite direction. So before I jump into what science is, I thought I would start with what science is definitely not. Science is not a belief system. If you ever hear somebody using the word belief in a sentence along with science, like believe in the science, you can rest assured they don't really know what science is. So secondly, science is not a group of people. I commonly hear people confusing the concept of scientific consensus with science itself. Just because a group of scientists thinks something, it does not mean that science says that thing. So third, science is not a political movement. It shouldn't really be associated with one political party or political movement and not another. But what is science? Science is simply a way to discover information. Perhaps you've heard of the scientific method. The scientific method is a set of steps you can follow to discover information, data. And then you can use that data how you wish. I think a lot of times people confuse the data that people come up with almost as science itself. And now the data needs to be believed much like a religion is believed. Science is a way to come up with good explanations for things. And at the end of the day, a good explanation is really what scientific method is trying to produce. So the next question to figure out is what is a good explanation? It seems clear that human beings come up with all kinds of different ways to explain things, but some of them are very good, some of them are very bad. It seems like human beings have trouble, you know, clearly defining what is a good explanation and what's a bad one. So there's this book, it's called The Beginning of Infinity by David Deutsch, famous physicist. It's a pretty complicated book. I've been trying to go through it. There's even some podcasts you can listen to to try to understand this since he, he gets into some pretty you know, deep ideas and deep concepts. In the first chapter of that book, he dives into this concept of a good explanation and it's almost his improvement on the scientific method. So first and foremost, a good explanation is verifiable and testable. That means there's some kind of experiment you can run to verify that information. If somebody claims to have a good explanation, then there should be some way for you to discover it yourself, either through an experiment or maybe by examining other people's experiments. If there is no way to verify and test that information, then David Deutsch would say, it's not a good explanation. Another thing about a good explanation is it's generally creative in some way and it looks below the surface to try to explain something. It's not just the simplest and most likely explanation. So there's a good example I heard from Naval on Twitter, and he was the one that I first heard about this book, The Beginning of Infinity, from. But he says, let's say you're sitting you know, on the beach and you can see the sun setting. A naive explanation for that would be that the sun is moving. You can see it. You can look out the horizon and you can see the sun going down. Therefore, the sun goes around the earth. So a good and more creative explanation for that kind of goes against that and flies in the face of the most basic explanation. And that is that the earth is rotating. And that is why we get the appearance of the sun setting. We can actually run experiments and test that that will verify that information. So that's to prove that good explanations don't necessarily have to be simple. They can be complicated, but they do have to be testable and verifiable. Otherwise, it's not a good explanation. So tying this all together, if somebody uses the word science to back their political agenda, let's say some politician, the science says this, you need to ask yourself, is there a way that I can verify that information? Can I test that information for myself? It could be a very bad explanation and somebody will still use it to further their political agenda. So actually, one of my biggest pet peeve arguments surrounds this issue as well. And this is something that theists often say. I just saw it on Facebook yesterday and I, I couldn't help but respond. I'm like a moth to the flame. But the argument goes something like, 
science requires just as much belief as a religion. So what's the difference, basically? You guys are hypocrites. You criticize religion, but you yourself are doing just as much believing. And whenever somebody says this, I always respond with something similar. I say, science doesn't require belief. And if you think it requires belief, then you actually don't understand what science is. Let's use the Big Bang as an example. Theists often feel very offended by the idea of the Big Bang. And they say that the theory of the Big Bang requires just as much belief as in the belief of a god. So let's compare that to a religion. Most religions require belief. And if you don't believe, then generally speaking, you don't get the benefits of that religion, whether that be a promised afterlife or some other benefit. So belief is the key ingredient. So with science, you might come up with an explanation like the Big Bang, and then you could assign a probability to it. Let's say, I think there's a 10% chance that that particular theory is true. That is very different than saying, I believe that. If I believe in the Big Bang or I don't, there's no real change for me. It's not like I get an afterlife if I believe and I don't get an afterlife if I don't believe. So to summarize, if somebody claims to have science, ask them for their data. Is it observable? Is it verifiable? Is it testable? If it's not, then it's not a good explanation. That's all I got for today. Thanks guys, see ya.